Tip. It's P. Samples. The revolution will be digitized. Talk session series. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Real Talk Session. My name is Taryn Morgan, founder and content creator. And of course, we're th- staying hydrated with Warrior Water. Shout out to Fillmore Fit Gym in Windsor Mills, Maryland. Um, so today, I have the pleasure of having a Jersey native, uh, one of my little brother's friends that I consider to be my little brother also, uh, Mr. Jonathan Ramsey. What's going on? How are you guys feeling today? How are you feeling today? I don't think they can hear you, but you know, <laughs> talk to you back. But yeah, I'm doing quite well. You know, glad we were able to reshoot this. We had some technical difficulties before, but yeah. we here now. We here now. Indeed, yes. I'm glad it got done. Yes, I'm definitely. Happy. So you have a great organization that you started called What's the Movement. So can you tell us a little bit about it? Why you started it? When you started mm-hmm. it, etc. So I started it in college, actually. So it okay. started. Shout as, out to Wayne Patterson. Uh, shout out to Willie P. Yes. Um, so it started as a college radio show, um, okay. FM show for 88.7 FM, and it became something I couldn't really turn my back from. We were kind of giving artists an opportunity to be seen and heard. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at first it was just like uh, just like a, a hobby because, you know, I wanted to go to school for journalism. But then, like I said, I just couldn't turn my back from it. Thank you for giving some background to your mm-hmm. organization. So, like, what are some of the events that you have done um in the past or some mm-hmm. stuff that you have coming up in the future so with what's the movement the last thing we did was um our feels like r&b showcase um right around valentine's day um okay. shout out to above art studios for um for letting us have it there yes but um we showcased some of the best i in my opinion some of the best r&b acts um throughout the state of new jersey north south central mm-hmm. um coming up uh we got i wanted to do something every quarter so I do have like a brunch in mind that I'm going to co-sponsor with a couple of other companies. So we're going to, okay. um, you guys can look out for that. That's going to be fun. Right, cool. And then um, I'll put that information out as soon as the details are finalized. So you'll be able to come to the brunch. Definitely. Um, ladies wear yellow, reduced injury. Yes. But, um, <laughs> uh, also, um, this Saturday, um, the nonprofit I'm part of, we are having our webinar, um, so the name of my nonprofit is, um, well, it's not mine, but I'm the director of fundraising for the Entertain- Independent Entertainment Media Coalition. Okay. So um, it's a 501c um, nonprofit. Uh, we plan, it's kind of like a money pool for uh, independent uh, media folk in New Jersey, kind of mm-hmm. like yourself. Okay. So um, we also do scholarships for students trying to go to school for uh, journalism and media. So um, Nice. Uh, and we do workshops. Uh, this weekend is a webinar. Um, we're having um, Elizabeth Carter, she's a lawyer, um, teach um, people. And it's free 99, by the way. Uh, free is best. She's teaching about um, intellectual property and laws regarding it and your rights as a uh, creative. Okay. So, um, yeah, it, uh, I believe it's going to be archived. So if you miss it, um, you should be able to go watch it again on IE. MC dot org. Okay. I'll put the information at the end of the video too, so don't worry about yeah, that. We'll, we'll have that in the lower third somewhere. Okay. <laughs> but that's definitely a great idea for a nonprofit, mm-hmm. especially with the age we're in right now. Everybody yeah. wants to be a creative. Some good, some yeah. bad, but at least they're trying, which yeah. is the most important thing. And especially when it comes to intellectual properties, yeah. people don't understand that or they don't take time out for that. So salute to your organization for yeah. knowing that because a lot of people don't own their podcasts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You think you own your podcast, but you don't. Please read up on all these third party apps that you're using mm-hmm. because in those fine prints, I'm not going to say anything else, but, you know, do you do your, your Googles, do your research, because at the end of the day, this is a learning process for everyone. Yeah, so definitely. You know, it's okay, but own your property yeah, because get, you're putting all this work in. Get an LLC. It, yes. it saves a lot. <laughs> LLCs protect you from being sued as a individual. So yeah. say, for instance, if I'm sued for Real Talk Sessions, that's the entity. Taryn Morgan's going to be yeah. good. So that's the important thing that creatives need to realize, you know. Mm-hmm register your business so that you take that liability away from yourself yeah. you know and it's great that you're educating because that's something that they don't want you to know 
yeah, he's been no, in the definitely. industries, you know. So that's definitely dope. Yeah. So one of the things that really stands out about what you do with What's the Movement is that you're highlighting Jersey acts. Yeah. So why do you think that Jersey is always overshadowed by New York or Philadelphia? Because we're always going to their places, but we never embrace what mm -hmm. comes out of New Jersey. Uh, I think a lot of reasons, you know. So like, it's it's funny because like, if you look in like any artist's bio, like it may say New Jersey, but if they're in North mm -hmm. Jersey, it'll also say slash NY. Yeah. Or if they're in South Jersey slash Philly. And y'all need to stop playing planes on your stuff. Y'all going from New York to yeah, New Jersey because you can't. You just, gonna fly? You know, <laughs> five fly, minutes. You can't fly on the turnpike. Guys. Exactly. <laughs> But um, I think, and I and I think that's changing. I think mm -hmm. now Jersey is trying to get its own identity, and um, so I think there's definitely like an art renaissance kind of happening in Jersey. Yeah. So um, it wasn't always like that, mm. but I'm proud of us for growing. Yeah, definitely, and that's one of the re main reasons why I started the Real Talk Session series because mm -hmm. we don't have anything that's from Jersey for Jersey, yeah. but we embrace everyone else. You know. Yeah. Um, looking back at 90s hip hop, we had Redman, um, mm -hmm. uh, Queen Latifah, yeah. you had a lot of artists, Eminem used to actually uh, rap in Newark. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what the group is, but a lot of people rap in Newark, but they don't give props back to New Jersey. Yeah. So that's something that, you know, I'm glad you're bringing light to, you know, yeah. bringing New Jersey to the forefront because we're here, you know. Yeah. Definitely. And, um and even back then, I'm not sure if they were big on on repping Jersey. Like, uh, I mean, you may hear a line from like a Rod Digger song. You yeah. may hear a line from, from Redman was song. he was he was hardcore. No, yeah, Redman yeah, yeah. Redman was was big on yeah. it. But um, but you know, it's it's changing, and um, I'm just happy to be part of it. Now, going back to the uh, feels like R&B event, mm -hmm. I was there. It was a great event. Definitely a lot of new talent that I haven't heard of. Mm -hmm. Good poetry you had there also. Yeah. Um, is that something that you look to do in the future more? Because we don't have like those kind of vibe-ish events in New Jersey. Um, definitely. And I'm trying to do something a little more local to the 732 for the next one. So, okay. um, I mean, it was in New Brunswick, which is technically 732. Yeah. But, but uh, we're from the shore, man. Yeah, so. Asbury, Neptune, yeah. stand up. That's where we hit. Yeah. And, and you know, Asbury has all the venues. And we're kind of just now breaking the doors down and uh, allowing the venues to to want to be more open about hip-hop and R&B and, yeah. um, and black music, period, like jazz going across the board. Because it's been such a, such a rock-based community. I mean, and... For good reason, like mm. Bruce Springsteen is from there, Bon Jovi is from there, yeah. but at the same time, Wendy Williams is from Asbury. Yeah. So um, I think the doors are just now starting to open, and we're here to try to hold them open. Okay, nice, nice. And rock came from black people, so... Yeah, yeah Chuck you know. Berry, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can go back even further, but uh, we're not going to do that. So I'm, I'm big on telling the stories of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about a time where what's the movement wasn't having the progression like you wanted it to and you just wanted to quit or whatnot. So mm -hmm. tell us about those tough times. Um, so um, there was a time I wasn't in school anymore. I, I took uh, I took three years off from school. So it took me a while to graduate. Mm -hmm. And but you um, got done, though. I did. Yes. It's very important. Um, but during that time, uh, my best friend had passed away. Uh, he was my college roommate. His name is Darius. Um, rest in peace to Darius. But, yes, um, he, um, I don't think I realized how close me and him were. So, like, I guess, like, between that, um, my own depression, uh, my struggle with my faith, mm -hmm. um, I took time off from What's the Movement. And, like, a lot of my staff is like, yo, like, Ramsey, what's going on? Like, are we still going? So, we actually shut down for a while. So, um, but I made the promise to my, my parents that I'd finish school and getting back in school kind of, uh, kind of put the battery back in my back in working on What's the Moment because I knew I had a bunch of plans for right after I finished school. And mm -hmm. it's just now in 2019 coming to fruition, I think. So I'm kind of proud of that, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And without experience, you can't have wisdom. So it's definitely good that it, it's not good in the sense of that it all happened, yeah. but it's something that is lessons in every single thing. And definitely. you definitely are a better man because of it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so touching on what you just said about struggling with your faith, can you explain to that to us? Because a lot of people have those same sentiments, but necessarily don't really speak out on it. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're open to talking about it, I would love to hear, you know. Well, you know, like, um, faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen and not being able to see things mm -hmm. is, 
is complicated. Like you, we've literally live a life where we've never seen God before, mm-hmm. but we have to trust and believe that he's there. Yeah. So I guess um, I was struggling with not like, I, I'm a skeptic. I, you know, I like to mm-hmm. think things out, yeah. um, but my evidence comes from the things I've overcame and not being able to do that by myself, being able to do that with God, being uh, yeah. watching money, like spread watching like, my two dollars this week. I, I got to spend the whole week make it to Friday when I get paid. Again. I know the struggles. Yeah. So like for for that to happen constantly over and over and over again, mm-hmm. I can't chalk that up to coincidence. Yeah, and a lot of people they overlook those small little yeah hints from yeah. God and whatnot. But it's good that you really saw that you know and accepted it. You know, because I've also struggled with my faith also, mm-hmm. um, especially with my bout with uh, depression. And it was one of those things where at my darkest hour, God came through and she gave me a sign that everything was coming through. Yeah, Yeah, I said she. (laughs) I was going to say, I heard you say she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the things (laughs) that that, it really helped me out because when I think about women, I think about people who are nourishing, they look out for you, Mm -hmm. they care for you. And I associate that with God, you know? So this is my personal thing, but you know, whatever your thing is, your thing, definitely. No, I'm I'm not one of those Christians that are like super conservative, like, oh, God can't be a woman. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm not one of those. (laughs) Besides, I love women. Yeah, exactly. You know, we we love our woman. We love our woman. My, My woman. And, yeah, and my and, woman and, too. And hey, my hey fiance. <laughs> hey. I'll graduate to that one day. Exactly, exactly. You know, small <laughs> steps, brother. So for you, um, what do you think was your internal motivational factor when you were going through those struggles? Um, you know, just not being content. You know, like uh I feel like like it takes a village and I feel like my particular village has invested so much in me, so I didn't want to let them down. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I like I'm I feel anointed like I'm supposed to do great things. So it'd be disrespectful to them to not sh- at least strive for them. Okay. And every time I've strived for them, great things have happened. So okay. I can't stop. I guess. All right, dope, dope. So being that what's the movement is driven by music in its presence mm-hmm. is of the culture. Um, what is your I guess take on the current state of music? I guess like the current state of music. I think everybody thinks like, oh, the current state of music, the quality's worse. It's mm-hmm. not as good. Uh, and I kind of talked about this in my podcast, Day Side B Side Podcast. It's out everywhere. Check the it way. out. Apple, um, po- uh, rate, subscribe, review. Yeah, do all that. Um, Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere you can find a podcast, you can find it yep. there. So, uh, and I talk about it there. So, um, actually, in my last episode. So, the quality hasn't really dropped. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, I think music is dictated by its listeners. Yeah. So uh, the second we get tired of fast food, microwave food, is the second the labels are going to start gearing quality content towards us. So mm-hmm. while right now, I'm not going to say any names, but while we listen to the kind of artists that we listen to, that's what they're going to make for us. Yeah. And so we get tired of that, everything is going to change. And it will. It always goes in cycles. That's, yeah, definitely. that's music. And people don't realize... I'm more so speaking on hip hop. Mm -hmm. Hip hop is still fairly new when you think about other genres. And they said that hip hop wasn't going to make it. Hip hop Mm -hmm. is the most profitable genre right now Mm -hmm. in the world. So there's evidence, you know, that what we've been doing has been working and what we continue to do with technology and the great advancements is going to be even greater. So I'm excited to see what's going on. I'm not a fan of the mumble rap. Some of it, you know, (laughs) the, 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 the beat, I'm for that. Yeah. But like yeah. some of it is like, nah, y'all keep your lils. Keep yeah. your lils. Yeah. Definitely. Except for Wheezy. I, I, he's good with me. But um, kind of at least. Is that Lil Wheezy? Yeah. Well, Lil Wheezy. I sound old right L- now. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Oh, all right. Cool. Well, I sound old. <laughs> Lil Wheezy. <laughs> but um, so what has been your favorite moment with What's the Movement? In the same day, uh, back when, when I was in school, in the same day, I found out that I not only had the number one uh show on the station okay uh and that station at in 2013 was the number one in the country Mm. um so my ratings came in that i had the number one show and we also got nominated for an mtv woody award which a lot uh, the station not not what's the moment but you know i like to think that the number one show had something to do with it exactly exactly it's on my humble rack yeah (laughs) but um i think like getting that news all on the same day a young 21 year old hearing something like that that's uh yeah it's it's 
makes you feel like everything is fulfilling, you know? Yeah, definitely. So especially the fact that you have that experience, Mm -hmm. what advice would you give to a younger individual trying to get into the creative field? Uh, Just, just do it, man. Um, Everybody like, don't be, don't worry about the market being oversaturated and everybody doing it. Like if like rappers have podcasts now, like whatever creative thing you do, just do it and don't be scared of failing because you learn so much from that failure and if you're a perfectionist and you're scared of failure you're gonna be on your p's and q's and i promise you're not gonna fail as much as you think you are yeah definitely and the main thing that i realized uh especially with the creation of this organization Mm -hmm. is that you just have to do things um with repetition comes experience and with that experience you learn what you're good at and what you're not good at yeah it's important that you actually watch yourself, listen to yourself, see yeah. what your mannerisms are, those ums, the likes. Yeah, that's, I, I'm that's notorious me. for that. Oh, that's me too. If y'all that's watching these too. videos, I say dope a lot. I apologize. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> but that's definitely true. And I would say also one of the biggest things is not to expect things to happen overnight. Yeah. You may think you have a good idea. It could be a good idea, but it takes a while for people mm-hmm. to catch on to that good idea and to get that movement. So... Only the strong will survive, and yeah. you must keep being persistent in your passion if this is truly what you want to do. So Indeed. definitely salute to you, because I remember seeing you for years doing this stuff. Yeah, this is like and eight years in the making, man. Yeah. yeah, and I finally got the confidence to get on camera at the very end of 2018. So yeah. definitely salute to you, and like you've been an inspiration when it comes to me coming out of my shell and being confident in yeah. my media personality, because that's what I'm doing now, which yeah. is uncomfortable, but... You gotta do yeah, it. It's weird being on the other side of this. Like, yeah, like I'm I'm normally interviewing somebody. So I, in the same sense, like I feel I feel a little yeah. like it feels different being on this side of the microphone. Yeah, definitely. Because I've been doing videography since 2007, yeah. and it's like that's over 10 years mm-hmm. of being behind the camera now yeah. here. But um, one of the things that you're good with is networking, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to Jersey talent mm-hmm. and different people who are making moves in the creative field. So, like, who are some of the organizations, groups, et cetera, that you've worked with personally and that you think that the people should keep an eye on? Um, that stuff. So, there is a bunch. Um, Don't take offense if you forget because it's at the work. Yeah. He's tired. I'm tired. <laughs> but we're going to make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, shout out my man Rodney in Garden State Hip Hop. Uh, he's sold out um, House of Independence twice um, mm. down on Cookman Ave in Asbury. He has a dope movement happening. Um, I just got to host his last show, which is, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, okay. Shout out to him. Shout out to Weird Jersey. Um, they just had a show that we just did media for. Um, uh, partnered with Millie Chantel and her Music for Medicine series. That was great. Um, shout out to her. Shout out to the Gray Matter, my homegirl Bree. She runs a online platform and a digital magazine. Mm. Um, and oh, speaking of magazines, shout out to Jay Doe, uh, Gabby, also from Neptune. Um, she um, Neptune people. She runs uh, Jay Doe magazine. They just did a really nice uh, uh, cover of a couple of dope acts around the way, um, and not just music. Like uh, they kind of just all over the board. Um, Man, it's a, it's a lot, and I know I'm. Uh, shout out to Philasa Dom, uh, Philasa Dom. She hates when I mess up her name. <laughs> um, shout out to Fila. Um, she actually is the president of the Independent Entertainment Media Coalition okay. and editor in chief of Invert Entertainment. Shout out to Mitch from Suits. Shout out to Kiera and Deja. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm I'm gonna stop before I mess up anybody else's name. Yeah, but the <laughs> fact that we have all that talent in New Jersey. We need to come together. And that's yeah. the main thing that once we put our pool of resources together, yeah. we're unstoppable. Mm-hmm. But we have that crab in a barrel mentality sometimes. Yeah. But I think that there's an energy shift and a lot of people are open to collaboration and whatnot. Yeah. So I think that's great for New Jersey and in general for mm-hmm. creative spaces and whatnot. Yeah. So um, in closing, you know, um, thank you for your time and everything. Uh, thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate you, man. So can you just let the people know how they can reach out to you? Um, so you can reach out to me. Uh, you could go to what's the movement dot net or if you type in dot com, it doesn't matter. It'll go to dot net because um, I own it. All right. Yeah. Ownership going back yeah. to it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> humble brag. But <laughs> uh, 
you could follow me personally at Jonathan C. Ramsey on Instagram or at Ramsey Said What on Twitter. If you type in Ramsey Said What, you'll find me. Um, and it'll be at the end of this video. Sir. Yeah, so you you can't miss me. Jonathan C. Ramsey, Ramsey Said What, or at What's the Movement on social media. Okay. Everywhere. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Real Talk Session. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Talk session series, the revolution will be digitized. <laughs> it's peace simple, the revolution will be digitized.